everybody, I'm Kathy Hester. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're gonna to do something super fun. We're gonna do another recipe in the Nutri-Milk. This time we're gonna make oat milk, the Nutri-Milk way. So last time we saw the Nutri-Milk, I did a live and we did an unboxing and we made some hemp cashew chocolate milk that was delicious from their recipe. So. I did oat milk my way off camera and it did get a little bit, um, it didn't exactly get gummed up, but there were a lot of starches I had to clean out. So I'm wondering if with the Nutri-Milk, there's a reason behind soaking the oats. So we're gonna try that method today. I also made some peanut butter that turned out beautifully. And what I would say is, you know, I think originally I'd said, I didn't think I would put any of this in the dishwasher. I think if I made a nut butter, I would put those parts in the top part of the dishwasher just to get that oiliness off of there. I won't be making nut butters very often, so it's not a real big concern, but I wanted to kind of point that out. So in the big book of Nutri-Milk recipes that comes with the Nutri-Milk, which is a big book. One of the things that it says right here is first soak your oats. And so they're saying for one cup of oats, allow 30 minutes to an hour before draining. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna go ahead and continue to make our oat milk. So let's go over to the sink. So I just went ahead, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I can make this a little easier. This is my little spaghetti monster strainer <laughs> and a bowl so that it kind of fits not all the way in, but close enough. This is one cup of sprouted thick cup oats. Now you want to make sure that your holes aren't so big, those are going to fall through. I'm taking some filtered water. That's why it's coming out of a pitcher and I'm just gonna cover up the oats. I don't really need to put a lot of water in there. And then we're just gonna let this soak from 30 minutes to an hour. I think I'm probably gonna do 30 minutes. All right, so it's been 30 minutes. They said 30 minutes to an hour. And let's see what we've got here. So you definitely can see it's kind of cloudy water. So what we're doing is richening some of the starches off. And I'm going to, it says to just push on the oats. And they use the word viscosity, which is a $10 word anyhow. But I think what happens is as fast as this moves, the starches do something in this particular machine. In general, I don't recommend soaking oats. So it's gonna be exciting to see. I think it's prop, they know their product better than I do, <laughs> certainly at this point. Um, and you can see, it's definitely some starches that I'm squeezing out. Okay, and I think that's close enough. And then we're gonna move it over and put it into the Nutri-Milk. So these are the oats that I'm using and I just get them at Costco. And I've been digging them. I'm gonna be looking at the recipe and then let's look again. So we're gonna take this part off, this part off, and I'm gonna take this guy out. So let me show you in here in case you didn't see the other video. There's like a food processor type blade, this that has the spout. Then this has the screens, which keeps us from having to strain things. Okay, so this part helps keep everything off the sides a little bit. So let's go ahead, because it does say to place the oats and optional salt. So you'll see that in a lot of plant milk recipes. And it can add to the sweetness and it can also help 
the preservation or how long the milk lasts. Now with that said, if you don't use salt, don't do it here. It's okay. It's not going to kill anything. It's not like, ooh, I've messed everything up. No, it's not like that at all. So because the Nutri-Milk first grinds everything, kind of like if this were nuts, it would make a butter first and like a nut butter. And then we add water and then it's going to make the milk. Get all those oats in there. Okay, so I think just for interestingliness, just for an experiment, I'll put a pinch of salt in here. You don't have to. We're gonna go ahead and put this in. We're gonna put the lid on and it seals on with a snap, just like this seals on it with a snap, just like a food processor, okay? down and then it says we're gonna press the butter cycle if you guys can see here so the butter is up here and it's gonna set for one minute which is a lot less than 16 and then we're gonna press start and you can see that it's starting to process All right, so let's take a look at what it's done. Oh, it's <laughs> we can just pull this up and see this is where it locks and unlocks. So basically, it looks a lot like oatmeal. Okay, so that's what we've done. We're gonna go ahead and add a quart of water. So we just pour the water on in here. this back in, put the lid on, and then again that goes in there and that's where it starts. Alrighty, and we are gonna press mix. We don't change the default time, so there's the mix button. The default time is four minutes and we're gonna press start. And one thing you can see is some of the milk is already coming through the filter. So it's almost as if there's like this little container and it's pushing it out. I know it's a little bit, you can sort of see from the wave of milk on the inside. You want to make sure that this is closed, else milk would be spilling all over the counter. And it has a little thing that clips over and you want to make real sure that that's secure. I'm looking around at some of my containers. I got this at Ikea, and it's kind of a nice container. And they also had a smaller one and a larger one than this to keep things. You can find a lot of things small or large like this at Home Goods, at the thrift store. The one thing I would recommend is then having some kind of brush to clean it with. So this is the one that came with the almond cow and you can buy it or something like it on Amazon to store your milk. And I highly recommend this fancy brush that the almond milk has for that. We've got about three more minutes. Okay, so now we're going to do what I didn't do during the live, which is use the dispense button. So there's a dispense button here. I'm going to move this towards me because we're going to dispense everything. So what we say, so we're going to press dispense, then we press start, which gets it going like this in a different direction, and then we open up the spigot and the milk comes out. We'll 
also look at how cleaning it up is pretty easy too. So one of the things that I did notice, so when I did not soak the oats, see this foam? There was a lot of the foam that didn't go away. So it wasn't really debris or anything. So I do believe that soaking the oats for the Nutri-Milk made a huge difference in what we're getting out here. And so this is still kind of pushing some of this pulp, but you can see it's just dripping now. We'll give it another, it's got three minutes, two, one, and it's done. So it gives you how much. I'm also gonna just, yeah, leaning it over a little bit. If you ever did this with an iced tea machine, <laughs> then it will be familiar. Be careful when you're doing this. It's not that heavy, but I want every last oaty goodness out of there. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off and let's look at the milk. Milk is nice, it's frothy. I am of course gonna taste it. We could have put dates in here, we could have put vanilla, we could have put strawberries, we could have done all kinds of things. It's nice. It is, the, the taste is slightly different but it's still very good. It doesn't quite have the same um, like darker oaty flavor that I'm used to without it soaking. So if that's something you don't like, then maybe this is the way to go. I think if you're gonna make oat milk in the Nutri-Milk, this is the best way to do it. All right, now let's take this puppy apart and let's go clean. So we just pull that out. We're gonna undo this. So there's some pulp, and we can um, scrape that into something if we want to, or not. If I take this out, this does not take the pulp out with it. It's just gonna leave the pulp in the bottom part, which is also fine, because <laughs> that's where it is. So I'm gonna take these pieces, and we'll look at the other one last, and I'm gonna clean it up over in the sink. Just so you can see, we, we've kind of talked, let me move our oat soaking water. And this oat soaking water, I'm just gonna put on some plants. I'm gonna put out my garden. And where the froth is, there's a little bit of, like not scrubbing, not like soy milk scrubbing, but we will need to, you know, do use just a little bit of soap. And let's go ahead and scrub around on the inside, especially that screen area. And this is pretty much why I don't think we'll be using the dishwasher unless we're making um, nut butter without putting any of the water and turning it into nut milk. I did find that that needed a lot more scrubbing. We want to be very careful. This is an incredibly sharp blade, but see how there's some gunk in there. And this is what I was showing you for the jugs. It's an almond cow brand. Everybody comes with something, <laughs> you know? And the Nutri-Milk came with this one, which can also get into the little crevices. Okay. And let's do the top real quick. Doesn't really need any soap, but let's just take care of that. All right, and then we're gonna bring the bigger part over. And I'm not saving the pulp this time. There's not that much pulp. And honestly, I think it's kind of a good prebiotic for our septic tank. <laughs> now, this just comes up a little bit. You just hold it up a little bit and pull it out. Also, this part comes off which I think is awesome. So you can take 
a little straw cleaner. Or you can be like, that was pretty good. I don't see anything in there, but we can rinse it out really good anyhow. And then see how, basically I just rinse this. The only thing we wanna really focus on is in here, make sure nothing is trapped in there. Then I'm just gonna take my brush and just kind of brush it around. If something was in one of, like stuck over here, like it was with the peanut butter, you can just do that and scrape it out. So it is a really good tool that comes with it. And that's it. So I'm just gonna leave it over here and let it dry. So honestly, that's pretty easy peasy. And this is the hard one in that you soak it. It says soak 30 minutes to an hour. I don't know at this point what would happen if you soaked it longer. I soaked it for 30 minutes. There was still a little foam. So I wonder if I soaked it for an hour if there would be none. So maybe the next time I make it, I'll show you. And let's see. I don't know if this is a quart or not. Let's see how much milk fits in here. And then pretty much I just take a funnel and I may still pour some. Now, remember, oat milk does not last quite as long as some of the other milks. So it could only last three to four days. And you can see here too, there's still some pulp in the bottom. And I wanna be real clear about this. So what I would do, see that's a lot of pulp. And there's nothing wrong with it be having some pulp. I'm just gonna see if I can strain it out a little bit further. And oftentimes I'll take my little bar strainer, put it on top of my funnel. That's what I do with a lot of milk. And I think that's pretty oaty. There's some milk coming out. We don't wanna push on it too much because that will also can cause some um, goopiness. But the thing is, is that the pulp is just so small, it really kind of snuck through. You know, just a little bit's coming through. See that? But you can put this pulp in your oatmeal. You can put, make a dog cookie real quick with it. You can freeze it and burgers. You could put it in cookies, bars. There's just, there's a lot you can do with it. You can also dehydrate it and then grind it into a flour too. And so you would have kind of oat fiber, which you can buy. So, there you go, and actually these um, medium ones from Ikea fit a quart of milk perfectly. And I think this was like five or six dollars. I don't really remember because we were there late, but there you go. Happy milk drinking.